Let's continue our journey through Vex and Vops by looking at how we can create arrays. And briefly before that, we're going to talk about variables as well. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. I'm also going to have a written version of it available. So if you want to just have a written version so you don't have to reference the video and try and scrub through and find what you're looking for, then you can grab that as well. But let's go ahead and drop down a grid and then we'll drop down an attribute wrangle and we'll set our display flag there. So let's talk about variables first. So what is a variable? A variable is basically just an attribute that is temporary and does not move down the node tree as you create more nodes. It's going to just be for the code that you are running and it's going to be discarded after that code has ran. So let's take a look at this. So let's create an, an attribute first. So for an, an integer attribute, let's do i at my int and let's set that equal to one. And you can see that that now adds us to our geometry spreadsheet. But if we wanted to create a variable that is an integer, we're going to use int. And you can see that this is popped up as purple. If you see purple, it's going to be referencing a variable. So we'll call this my int two, and let's set that equal to a value of two. Now, if I hit control and enter, you're going to see that we don't get any errors, but we also don't get anything set up here in our geometry spreadsheet. So how do we know that it's actually working? Well, we can test it by creating another attribute. So I at my int three, and we can set that equal to my int two. And now you can see that this is popping up in our spreadsheet with whatever value that we set up in this. So if I change that to three, it changes to a three. If I change it to a four, you're gonna see that it changes to a four. Now we also have other variable types. So if we wanted to get a vector, we can do vector. You know, we have a vector two. We have our, whoops, our vector four. Basically any any variable that we want that is also we're also capable of making an attribute for we can create a variable for so if we look at our documentation here for the houdini vex documentation come down to this part where we have referenced before for creating different attributes you can see this this right side is for attributes so this specifies how we create each individual type and over here is actually how we create the variables. So if we type float, we're going to get a float vector two, we vector and vector four, we all talked about as well as int. If we wanted a matrix two, we type matrix two, matrix three, matrix, string, and dict. They all refer to their respective variable types. So if you want to create a variable, this is how you're going to do it. If you want an integer or sorry, an attribute, I mean, then you're going to reference this right side. But let's go ahead and just actually delete this just so we don't get any errors. And let's set this kind of off to the side here. And let's make a copy of this and start to look at our arrays. So I'm going to get rid of everything there. So there's two ways that you can create arrays. You can do it with variables or you can do it with attributes. And they work a little bit differently. So we're going to go ahead and just cover both of them. So if we wanted to create an integer array that is a variable, we're going to do int, and then we're going to give it a name. So let's do int array. Let's just do int array. And we're going to use these two square brackets. And then we can set that equal to something by using these little squiggly brackets. So let's do one, two, three. And you can see that if I hit control and enter, it's going to not give us an error, but again, we don't have anything showing up in our spreadsheet because that is not going to carry on past this code block. It's just going to be discarded. So let's go ahead and create an attribute so that we can take a look at making sure that we get what we wanted with our variable array. So for an attribute array, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to use our identifier. So in this case, for an entry, we're going to use our I. And then we're going to use those square brackets again. And then we'll do our at, and let's call this array. And now we can just set this equal to the same thing that we had set up here. 
and control and enter and we get that array showing up in our spreadsheet. So let's check our variable by just saying int array. And I press control and enter and you see that we get our integer array that's showing up as our, in our geometry spreadsheet is the same thing we had here. If I wanna change this, you can see we get that changing down in the spreadsheet. Let's set that back to one, two, and three. Now, what if we wanted to add to this array? So there are two functions that will do that. Let's take a look at the first one, which is the push function. And if we look at the tooltip that pops up, you see that it is looking for two arguments. It's looking for the name of the array, and then it's gonna look for the value as the second argument, the, the value that we wanna to add to our array. So if we type in array as our first argument, and then let's add a four to the end of our array, you can see control and enter that it's going to add that four to the end of our array. So let's go ahead and look at the other function to add to an array, which is the append function. And if you look at our tooltip, it's going to be the same thing. It's we're going to need two arguments, one of them, the first one being the name of the array, and the second one being the value that we want to add to the end of the array. So I'm gonna just copy the same thing that we did before. I'm gonna paste that in there and just change it to a five. And you can see that we have now added a five to the end of our array. So what happens if we want to add multiple values at once? So we can't just you know, put a five, six, seven. That's gonna give us an error. If we were to try to use our little squiggly lines, five, six, seven, it's also going to give us an error with that. So we can't do that. We actually have to create a variable and then we can load that variable into our append or push fun function and we can use that. So it actually doesn't matter which function you use, push or append. Personally, I think the append makes more sense. You're appending a value to the end of the array but whatever one works, whatever makes sense in your head, whichever one you want to use is perfectly fine. They both do the same thing. It really doesn't matter. But let's go ahead and create another array. So we'll do int and we'll call this added values. And again, we're going to need our square brackets. We're going to set that equal to with our squiggly brackets. Let's do six, seven, eight. And let's go ahead and use our append function again. So append and then at array. And let's add our added values as our, as our values input. Whoops. And now if I take a look at our geometry spreadsheet, you can see that we have added all those values to our array. So super simple to do this, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense if you've ever done it before. So definitely get yourself familiar with creating arrays and working with them. Let's go ahead and move on over to the VOPs portion. So let's add down a point VOP. And personally, I think it's a little bit easier to add um, or create arrays inside of a wrangle, but it is something that you can do in a point VOP as well, or a, a just a VOP in general. So. Let's drop down. So there's, if we type, start typing in array, we have a bunch of different things in here and all these you can do in, um, in VEX as well, but we're gonna go ahead and just take a look at the append function. So if we drop down this append, we need to, it needs a couple of values. So it needs to know what type of an array it is. So in this case, it's going to be an integer array and it needs a value. So. If we go ahead and pipe in, let's just use our point number into this, and then let's do a bind export. We can set this type to a integer array. Let's do this my int array. And we can wire this into our array, but we're only getting one value in here. So if we wanted to add a second value, we can just add another append in here and we can wire this output into the array type and then we can use our value here or let's just do a constant let's add this constant to the value and let's make sure that it is an integer 
And then let's wire that into our bind. And now you can see that we have a secondary value that we can change. And that's going to give us our, our second value there. So that's how you go about creating a array inside Vops. You can actually do this with a, another node as well. We have the array insert. And this allows us to specify exactly where in the array that we want to we want to add this value. So let's just look at that. So let's um, add in our value. So we can let's add it to the end. Actually, let's not wire that PTM in there. So again, we can wire in the output of our append into the array type, and then let's do again another constant. I get an integer and we wire that into the value. And this allows us to actually change the, the spot or like the arrangement of the actual array. So you can see that we currently have it set up to the first index. So that's going to add it to the front and I can change that however I want. Now notice if I go up to like seven or something and I set this equal to a different value other than zero, it's going to add in different values into there until it gets to whatever input or index that we have set here. And it's just going to put zeros in there. So just keep that in mind. That is two ways that you can create arrays inside of Vops. Really not too difficult, but it really will throw you for a loop when you're first trying to do it if you don't know what you're doing because it's not real easy to just, you know, add like you can't just add two constants in there into a, a bind export and get an array out of it you have to use these these different um, vops in order to do that but anyways hopefully this helped you out arrays are very useful for certain things adding finding like the the number or the near points is is one of those that uh, we'll, we'll cover in the future um, but there's some more complex things that we can do with arrays that we will, like I said, look at in future videos. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. We will continue to look at more VEX and VOPS functions as we continue on through the series. So make sure you don't miss out on any of those. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.